Welcome to Awaken the Spirits. LA Haunted Hayride and Delusion. Two names that are loved by haunt fans across Southern California. While two very different experiences, they are now part of the 13th Floor Entertainment family. We are excited to have key members representing each company here today to share their Halloween plans with all of you. Please welcome to the stage CEO and founding partner of 13th Floor Entertainment Group, Chris Stafford. I think there's other intros, otherwise I'm in trouble here. <laughs> no, but just you. All right, well, I guess it's all me. So I'm gonna bring to the stage the guy that's helping us put this panel together today, uh, Ted Doherty. Yeah. We wrote some really cool intros. I don't have them in my head, so I'm winging this. I'll let you uh, pick up the next two. How about that? Sure. Yes, I'm Ted. See Zori. how that works. So good to see you. Hi, I'm the writer and live entertainment director for the LA Haunted Hayride. Yeah, thanks. Uh, next up, I would like to bring out my uh, dear friend, uh, the creative director for 13th Floor Entertainment Group, Mr. John Cook. Next up, we have the Director of Immersive Entertainment for 13th Floor Entertainment Group, Mr. John Braver. Yeah, I don't know what happened to that really cool intro that was supposed to I don't either, but thank you, Ted. Well, listen, we are so excited that you're here. Thank you so much for joining us today. Are you ready for Delusion and Hayride for 2021? Yeah. Well, uh, the way this is gonna work today is uh, the first half, we're gonna talk about some of the juicy details behind Delusion. And then halfway through, we'll kind of switch gears and talk about uh, some of the inspiration behind the LA Haunted Hayride the past couple of seasons, but most importantly, we're gonna talk a little bit about what people can expect to experience this season for the LA Haunted Hayride. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. All right. So, uh, 13th Floor Entertainment Group is the parent company to both Delusion and the LA Haunted Hayride. So, let's get to know them first. And to kick it off, we have a little video to show you. So, here we go. Entertainment Group is the largest haunted attraction production company in the world. Uh, over a, a dozen major haunts spread throughout the United States. Uh, Chris, 
I want to talk a little bit about how 13th Floor Entertainment Group got started and how it's kind of grown through the years. Sure, yeah. Some of you may have heard this story before. I'll try to be quick with it. But uh, first, before I do that, I want to thank David and Claire and Rick for putting this together. Uh, awesome way that we can all be together and see each other in person. So let's all give them a quick hand. So, uh, backstory of 13th Floor, I started out just like a lot of the people in this room. I was a Halloween fan, I worked at a haunted house. I had a friend that called me when I was 15 years old and said, hey, you want to go scare some people tonight? And that sounded like fun, so went and did that. Actually met one of my business partners working at that haunted house. And how this company started was basically he and I sitting at that haunted house and talking about what would it be like if we did our own haunted house one day? What would it be like if we did this professionally? And that's what we did. In 2002, we opened our first haunted house and really just as a hobby. I mean, it was how we celebrated Halloween. It was what we did. So we wanted to be able to give that experience to other people. I wanted my kids someday to be able to work in the haunted house. Started as a hobby, but then in 2008, we started to get serious about looking at it as a business and kind of scaling it outside of our, our own market and what we had been doing. And in 2008, Warren and I started another haunted house in Denver, which was the original 13th floor haunted house, and really just used all of the knowledge that we had kind of gained from bootstrapping that business up to where it was and, and kind of hitting the fast forward button a little bit on what we wanted to do, you know, kind of when you think about what's the next thing you want to do in, in your career. So we did that in 2008. Then in 2009, we met a couple of guys from Austin, Texas that were doing a haunted house called House of Torment. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the amazing haunted house in Austin. And they were looking to scale the business outside of Austin as well. So rather than compete, we teamed up. And in 2010, we opened our first joint venture, which was 13th Floor Haunted House San Antonio. And that was really the genesis for the 13th Floor Entertainment Group, was bringing those companies together and, and opening new businesses. And that's what we've been doing ever since, whether it be through new haunted houses ground up or through acquisitions, as in um, you know some, some things out here like the LA Haunted Hayride. Um, and that's what we've been doing, and we really haven't been looking back since, and couldn't be more proud to be up here with uh, John from Delusion and John from uh, all of 13th Floor and, and Hayride. Well, I guess we're all kind of one company, but uh, yeah, couldn't be happier to be a part of these events out here and couldn't be happier to share with you guys what we're doing this year. Right, awesome, and that kind of leads us to uh, attractions like the Hayride and Delusion. So let's kick things off with the Delusion with another little video. Here we go. I've been going for years. Are any of you fans of Delusion? Yeah, so I think uh, it was pretty big news when 13th Floor uh, connected with, uh, with Delusion. So let's talk a little bit about how that happened. How did the two of you team up like this? I can keep it simple. I couldn't get a damn ticket to the thing, so I figured <laughs> this, this was the best way to do that. <laughs> That's right. And he threatened my family. That's the only reason I'm here. Please help me. Uh, no, Chris and I have known each other, I think, since 2017. He came to a show called uh, This Crimson Queen, I think. It was a vampire show. And uh, we've just been teasing each other with the idea of, you know, collaborating in this um, new medium of interactive theater. Uh, I still consider it new. But, uh, and he, you know, they do big, large-scale events. Whereas Delusion is more of an intimate, um, you know, higher ticket price, lower capacity kind of event. Um, and so things just started, uh, you know, our, our conversations evolved over time about, you know, getting into, 13th floor, getting into this kind of world. Getting, um, you know, evolving into these more intimate experiences. And so when, uh, you know, the pandemic came around and then in January, I think it was January when I hopped on board, but we started talking about it early at the end of last year. 
And it's just funny how, you know, we're talking about live events, but we, we, we were, during a pandemic, but we were looking farther ahead. And so the idea is that uh, people want to do these things. People are going to want to be in this, uh, you know, like we are right now. We, we're striving to get back together again. So the long game here is to create a new division within the company to, um, to create these experiences with Delusion. It's a big return this year. Uh, I'm kind of launching the whole thing. So I'm like stupid excited about it. I've never been so excited about a Delusion <laughs> until this one for sure. But now to have you know, Chris on board and to have the apparatus and these, these brilliant, amazing family, they become family very fast. It's, it's, it's a dream come true. Very cool. Well, now, if you've been following Delusion, you know they have been around for a little while. So, John, can you talk a little bit about sort of how Delusion began and how it's kind of grown throughout the years? Yeah, I can dig into that. I'm kind of, I feel like Chris sometimes, like, I feel like I've told this story a lot, but I'm going to tell it again in, a, in a, the best way I can. I mean, 2011 was the first year. That was a, a pilot year for, for me. I was working on film. I was a stuntman for many years, still do that kind of work from time to time. But um, I decided to take all my contacts from the film world and create a living horror movie where you are a character inside of the story. So we did it for 11 nights that year. And it just, uh, it blew up. There was nothing like it. There was delusion and then there was sleep no more in the East Coast. And uh, ours was a narrative adventure with branching storylines. And then theirs was like an open-ended kind of world. But anyway, uh, that, that, that was just euphoric. Like, to see people come out of this experience, it was just unreal. And then 2012 came along. After that, after that year, um, that's when Neil Patrick Harris came to the show and he loved the show and he was going nuts about it and called me during, during the play, actually, in 2011. And that was that's funny because I was hooking somebody up to one of the stunt rigs and then um, I got a call and it was Neil as I'm, you know, got the phone on my shoulder like this. He's like, hey man, I just came to the show. It's so cool. We got to do something. So 2012 came along and we produced the show together. And then at that point, it sort of took off after, after 2012. So that became like like a drug for me. I was like, this is so cool, I just gotta keep doing this. I'm a, I'm a big time delusion fan, and just like other people. I just wanna see this stuff evolve. So the whole idea behind it was creating original stories. It was very, very much centered around the story. Getting amazing actors and stunt people and an original score and, and creating these live movies, basically. And so 2012 came around, Neil's show. Um, then 2013, we did it in an old church. Um, that was, that was an annoying experience because we, we got shut down. If anybody, anybody go to that show, 2013? Um, hopefully, I'm glad you got to see it. In 2014, uh, it was called Delusion Lies Within at this really cool old mansion. And then 2016 was His Crimson Queen. Um, and this show was, and then I, I got into uh, my Raiders of the Lost Ark fix. I had to do like an Indiana Jones like sci-fi adventure. So I did that with uh, the Blue Blade. Chris's favorite show. <laughs> okay. um, you, you'll be happy to know that our first conversation was, all right, this is going to be scary this time. Yeah, yeah. So during Blue Blade, um, I, I knew that when we come back, uh, whether, and this was before I joined 13th floor, I was like, I got to write like, the most terrifying show I can. So that's this year's show. Um, so we're back to horror for sure. But yeah, it's evolved, and yet now it's finally reached a place where we have this, the support. You know, they, 13th floor takes chances. You know, they're rolling the dice. They, I, what I love about them, they're just very confident, and, and again, they take their chances. So um, with this new endeavor, it's just, you know, we're all in it. We're in it together on this one. Um, so this is sort of a new era for Delusion. We're going to try to bring about things that we haven't, that I've wanted to do all these six previous shows that I hadn't been able to do yet. And this new venue is allowing me to do that in this new format. The open world and narrative that we'll get into is, is pretty special. Yeah, that's awesome. And that does kind of bring us up to date. And I mean, you kind of mentioned it a little bit, but sort of what was the inspiration behind this season's Reaper's Remorse? Well, yeah, I, I did touch upon that, that I had, I had to get back to some kind of horror, horror story. Uh, the inspiration came from um, finding this venue. I actually found it a couple years ago, and I, I, it, it stuck with me. I didn't end up doing a show there, but it stuck with me. And it was this old like, museum kind of space where they had strange little artifacts around. And um, 
I revisited it uh, late last year, and as I was sitting in it, I started thinking, you know, about this lone, this this woman named Esther Phillips. She lives in this house, and uh, she was a real character, little known wife to Louis Phillips, who was the richest man in L.A. many many years ago. But I like the idea that not much was known about her, so let's give her a story here. Um, it's it's quite a tragic one, <laughs> I have to say. But so she's basically. She lives alone in this mansion where she has these artifacts that house the souls of the, of the dead um, that were attached to that certain artifact. Uh, and so she protects them and she watches over them as they sort of linger in our world and not quite ready to move on. But she has the, I, I thought of this idea where she had this one artifact that is so personal to her that she can't even approach, she doesn't want to go near it. So she decides to invite guests over to help her uh, face, face this fear. And so you, if you're going to come to the show, then you are a guest of Esther Phillips. And good luck. Let's put it that way. Um, yeah, this one moves. This one moves. It's, uh, it's, it's definitely terrifying. Awesome. And speaking of the venue, there's, there's a little bit of a demonstration of it. Uh, th talk about how, you know, I mean, delusion, if you've gone to any of them, you know, I mean, the location is so huge in all of this. And we have this beautiful venue that, that, that we've located at, uh, what city is it in again? In Pomona. In Pomona. Very the cool. Great capitals of the world, you know, it's a place everybody wants to visit. Yes. <laughs> now, uh, in addition to this, uh, you know, it's not necessarily just going to be limited to just a couple of different rooms either. There's going to be open world experiences and VIP experiences for Delusion. You want to talk a little bit about these open world experiences? Yeah, I mean, this, this was a... Yeah, actually, let me just... Right there you see Tommy. Some of you guys know Tommy Hahn. From, uh, he's a game designer, so I'm bringing him on board to help out with flushing this whole world out. This kind of began with... Uh, the, actually, Chris and I were talking about it, how he's come to the shows and he's always wanted to live inside these worlds longer and to you know, make a, like a real big night of it. So that's, that's this year. This is our first in, um, endeavor into that, into that hybrid model. Um, so the open world, you will explore these artifacts I just mentioned before, where you will be able to piece together more of the story uh, by listening in on the voices that are trapped inside of there. And it's, you can think of it kind of like a mini scavenger hunt, and, um, or, and, it, and it helps supplement the main narrative of the play. So that's kind of scattered around certain areas within the mansion, along with uh, food and beverage and themed drinks and all that stuff. And so it's, if you spend the time there, you'll, you'll peel back the layers of the story even more. It's, it's really exciting. And here are some of the artifacts that uh, you know we're, we're thinking about uh, placing it within the show, and you'll be able to. They, they're all kind of tied into the story, as, as I mentioned. So it's it's really fun to be able to explore this because now we can finally have you live in this world longer. So if you come to the show, if you have an eight o'clock show, we'd want you to get there early, hang out before, stay there after. Basically, you can spend the whole night there if you want, eating, drinking, exploring, scavenger hunts, and then getting up to the VIP experience if you're able to do that. Her private collection. So, I mentioned Esther Phillips. She has an area of this of her estate that is off limits, um, unless you're unless you buy a ticket for the VIP experience. So she has very personal items that you can explore, where one of her darker secrets uh, will be housed. So I highly recommend this experience as well too. It's on the second floor of this mansion, and then there's a dark arts themed lounge or again, themed food and beverage with a strange mystical resident that you might encounter, uh, along with a parlor and a game room. Uh, so it's, it's just, this, this whole world has been flushed out in a way that I've always wanted to see it. So that's her private collection. And the next slide we have, oh, we're getting ready for the play, that's right. We're digging into the story. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna jump in as a, yeah, as a, as a fan of Delusion, which is really how John and I got to got to meet because I went to the show and was just blown away by it. But I always felt like I wanted more, right? Or at least at a minimum, when you were done with Delusion, you wanted to kind of hang out with your group and talk about it and kind of be more in the moment. So I'm excited for people to be able to do that this year. Oh, yeah. And uh, even though John might not think that 
uh, the location is is desirable. The the actual facility itself, I was completely blown away by, and I, I think you guys will be as well. Yeah, it, it's it's timeless. You're gonna go out to this industrial park, and all of a sudden you'll see this home that should not exist. And if you took the long drive out there, any of that traffic or anything will just sort of melt away when you find this place. You will be sucked into this world. It's 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 unreal. But the play itself, I, I talked a little bit about it, um, so I won't get into crazy detail. Uh, but let's, it, it is uh, production designed by Kevin Williams, who's been my production designer for quite some time, as pictured there. Uh, we never really shared much rendering or concept art, to be honest, uh, but this is some of the areas of the, some of the things in the show you might encounter. But we, we really pride ourselves on living in, living in this, the, the site-specific nature of, of, of whatever, whatever place we're in. This is a, a really cool uh, venue that, has, that lends itself to the story very well. Um, and Kevin just helps flush out this world and visualize it in ways that I don't even... I mean, I write down on paper and he comes up with unbelievable stuff. So lots of very strange things happen within these static images that you see. Let's go to the next one, Grandpa Simpson. Move along! Okay. And we, one of the, the best things about Delusion for me are the actors. If you've been to the show, these are some of the most stellar actors in this immersive theater world you'll ever encounter. So this is 1953 is our year. Uh, so feel free to come in, in that kind of uh, attire, if you wish. These are some of the characters you may encounter throughout. Let's go to the next one. Um, lovely, lovely characters. Good for the kids. <laughs> I will say this one is, is 12 and up, but it's still the scariest one to me. <laughs> so we're, we're digging into, um, like every other show, the otherworldly nature of, um, of all these stories. Gets realized in practical creature effects, all that kind of stuff. So, be prepared for um, really letting go and, and getting yourself, let yourself get into this dark, dark place <laughs> when you get to the show. Let's go to the next one. Yeah, that's a terrifying, I can't even look at that image, the guy with the mouth. Ugh. So all these really lovely, family-friendly images you see before you that you might come in contact with some of these characters. Um, and God, I so badly want to spoil some of these things, but I, I, <laughs> I can't. You get the idea, this is gonna be scary. Well, I love it, and to give you a little bit of a taste, we do have a little bit of a video to show you as well. So here we go. Yes, enjoy the trailer. There are some dead that go to the heaven. They linger, clutching to whatever threads of life they can find. Surrounded by them. Haunted by them. What does it taste like? But soon, with your help, my collection will be complete. Get your tickets now. Yes, yes. Can I speak about that, Chris? The, the tickets? Yeah, actually, uh, uh, I know that a lot of people tried to get tickets that couldn't get. We very quietly added a bunch more shows yesterday. So if you tried to get a delusion ticket and you could not, you may want to check back on the days you were looking at because they did add uh, quite a few more shows, actually. So. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Okay. We're gonna turn the page. We're changing gears now, and we're gonna head over to the Hayride. Yes. My, 
My dear friend John Cook has been so quiet here, John. I know, Sorry. I just want to yell into the mic already. John. John, as a creative director for 13th Floor Entertainment Group, I mean, that's, that's a pretty big responsibility. Can you talk a little bit about what that job entails? Well, it's still going for this season. Um, so when I, took, uh, when I took this job and Chris brought it to me, he's like, yeah, you know, mostly we're gonna focus on LA stuff. You can kind of help have a say in the creative for the, the rest of the locations. He lied. <laughs> and I just, uh, you know, it's been really cool growing up here in Southern California, growing up going all to these events to now be able to extend my reach to other places in the country uh, and bring my team from California out there to do these events has been awesome. Uh, we just, Chris handed us the keys to a hundred year old prison in Chicago that we just got back from called uh, the jo Joliet Haunted Prison. Um, then he sent us out to Phoenix, Arizona in the middle of August when it was 118 <laughs> into a dirt field. Because there was no humidity there. There wasn't <laughs> Illinois, but Phoenix, much drier. Uh, but but the, uh, the treat to that is then we get to come back to Los Angeles and put together the LA Haunted Hayride, which brings us up to now. Uh, but other than that, uh, we're also working to develop uh, with a really amazing team that's pieced together from a uh, creative collection all around the country to work on themes and maze overlays and new attractions um, that spread across the entire 13th floor platform, which I believe is 15 locations across the country. So it's, uh, it's a lot. It is a but lot. It's, uh, but it's, it's amazing. It's very, very rewarding, very fulfilling to be able to have that kind of creative reach. I, I think when John and I first start, started talking about him coming to work for 13th Floor, you made a comment about a bigger sandbox and more things to do. So I just wanted to give you as big of a sandbox as we could. You did. Thank you. <laughs> Well, you know, before we get into like the creative and writing phases for any of these attractions, we land on a concept. And what better concept for Halloween than an actual good old fashioned hayride? And, you know, I always kind of looked at hayrides as more of kind of like a Midwest kind of thing, maybe East Coast, New England, fall weather, there's a chill in the air, people are bundled up sitting on haystacks, you know, drinking apple cider type of thing. So to have something kind of like that here in the middle of the concrete jungle of Los Angeles, I think is, is, is pretty cool uh, and, and spectacular, really. But, uh, you know, it also has its challenges, its differences. John, you want to talk a little bit about maybe the differences, or at least some of the differences, between designing for uh, a singular walk through maze versus an actual hayride? Yeah, I think uh, I've mentioned this before, but the Hayride essentially is a pop-up event since it happens in such a ma massively visited park like Griffith Park. Uh, in 2019, we had 10 days to set up the entire event start to finish, um, which we have now, luckily, got a little bit more time, so that's awesome. But um, I think the biggest thing that I personally learned going from focusing on very detailed walk-through haunted attractions where you're right up against the sets, you're now in a hayride 20, 30 feet away from the set. So what I learned is the the size of the sets and the spectacle is what really, really reads and is impactful on the hayride. So that's what's, that's what's great is we learned so much in 2019 about, uh, about producing something like the hayride that and we've now had, unfortunately, unfortunately, how you look at it, we've had a, two years to reflect on that and then be able to go back to the drawing board redesign and be able to implement into 20, 20, it's 2021, right? It is. Yep. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. You know, and, and, and the Hayride also kind of works as a perfect backdrop for us to tell a story. A story about a strange town named Midnight Falls. Yeah. Now, Midnight Falls is strange because it's always trapped in 1985. It's always celebrating its 13th annual Halloween festival, and it's always Halloween night. And so when guests arrive to the event, they walk right into the middle of the Midnight Falls Town Square and into this fall festival. John, dude, I totally remember, you probably don't remember this. I remember we were driving around Rancho Cucamonga, if you know where that is. Uh, it was 
nighttime. We were driving in your old car, your last, your Jeep. And uh, we're getting something to eat. We're just kind of throwing around different ideas on what we could do uh, for this event. And I remember like yesterday, John's like, I got it. What if we make this whole thing into a town? And that was kind of that initial spark. And I also think a lot of it has to do with our uh, shared passion of traditional Halloween. So can we talk a little bit about sort of that uh, that, uh, that concept of the, and how that was derived for Midnight Falls. It is, it is crazy to think back to when it was just a spark of an idea and then it's now into a full-fledged uh, event. But uh, yeah, Midnight, you know, what I love about Midnight Falls is it's all come together so organically. And it's one of those things where it almost, I don't know, has like some sense of like being home almost, you know, and, and this like weird little Halloween lives that we live, you know? So I think that's kind of what, to me, ultimately, Midnight Falls represents is, is the love for Halloween and, and being able to create a town where all of these creatures and characters can live and they all have a sense of purpose, but also are there to, to scare you as well. So that's kind of the, the way we wanted to approach this, is make sure that Midnight Falls feels like a living, breathing town. And I think it's, gonna, it's something that we're able to build year after year. And that's what's such a great concept is we can visit different areas of the town, we can bring in different characters, and it can always be evolving. Yeah, and you know, that story of Midnight Falls spreads throughout the entire event, which I think is pretty unique for this region, for an event this size, because all the attractions tie back to that narrative. And then in 2019, in addition to Town Square and the Hayride, we had three uh, walkthrough attractions. And then in 2020, uh, despite the changes in the world, uh, people were still able to visit Midnight Falls with our live drive-up experience. Did anybody check that out? Right on. Well, for anybody who wasn't able to go, uh, what was the live drive-up experience? It was, it was a major pivot. It was... Uh, we just wanted to do something for Halloween. We didn't want Halloween to be canceled, you know? So um, definitely it was outside the box, but I think that was one thing that John and I were on the same page about the whole time is like, we were gonna do something. We didn't know what it was, but we were gonna figure it out. Yeah, and I think we had like, we had like a chart of things we could do as things progress and we got all the way down to the live drive-up experience. Uh, when we, and that's where we were at when we had to like pull the trigger to make something happen. But no, it, and it, was, it was awesome to be in that same mindset of like no matter what happens in this world, we're gonna figure out a way to celebrate Halloween with, the, with our friends and people we love. So uh, that's kind of where the live drive-up experience came from. But to, like Ted was saying, we wanted to make sure that the town of Midnight Falls lives on for the season. And um, in the spirit of that, we decided to take the old the, the town's old drive-in um, that was recently purchased by a certain Mr. Revolta who wanted to take it over and try and uh, breathe some new life or death into this, uh, into this place. And, and that's, uh, that was kind of the general concept that we built off of. Yeah, and I always kind of described it as like a drive-in movie theater, but like on steroids. You know, you had these live midnight fall monsters accosting the poor guests seated in the socially distant safety of their parked cars. But guess what? That was last year. You ready for 2021? Yeah! All right. Well, we have a little video for you. Here we go. This is MFAM Radio, and I'm your host, Jack Vincent, wishing you a happy Halloween. Preparations are well underway as everyone here at Midnight Falls is gearing up for the spirit of Halloween to take hold of our beloved fall festival once again. It's time to get those pumpkins carved, shine the tombstones, and dust off those costumes because we're ready to celebrate the most sinister night of the year. And when the sun sets on midnight falls, you never know who or what is waiting in the dark for you. Growing your hair out and maybe dying a block like that. Yeah. I, thought, I thought you were. I thought you were narrating that whole thing. Yes. From here, 
I huh? felt like you were narrating that whole thing. <laughs> it's weird. So, uh, you know, the, the spirit of Halloween is tightening its stranglehold on this town of Midnight Falls. And of course, yes, Jack Vincent will be back, uh, the local Midnight Falls radio DJ, uh, in his booth broadcasting from MFAM Radio. And just as a little side note, you know, part of the inspiration behind having these radio broadcasts going throughout the event, John and I, I mean, we're huge fans of John Carpenter's The Fog, if you've ever seen that. And there's, yeah, and there's the Adrian Barbeau character. She's a DJ. You can hear her voice throughout the movie almost like as a narrative. And they did something kind of similar with uh, Hubie Halloween, if you saw that, too. Uh, greatest movie of 2020. The greatest movie, yes. Um, yeah, but we thought, well, how cool would it be to have these radio broadcasts kind of going out throughout the event uh, so that way people can hear and learn more about Midnight Falls and the happenings around this place and this uh, uh, festival. And so when you're at the event, listen to some of those radio broadcasts so that way you can learn more about this strange town of Midnight Falls. Now, speaking of the town returning, of course, for 2021 will be our town square characters. And uh, yeah, I mean, these are the kind of uh, your, your stereotypical small town, like Mayberry trope kind of characters, but they've been stricken uh, by Halloween. John, let's talk about our town square characters. So r real quick, I guess a, a mini announcement that hasn't been public yet, but I'm sure you've put it together. The event is returning to Griffith Park. However, um, there is a small construction project, so we are moving within Griffith Park to a different location. And the good news about that, it's allowing us to sprawl out a little bit more and expand our town of Midnight Falls. So the town square is gonna be bigger. It's gonna have more offerings as far as like food and beverage and more sets and more characters. And uh, the characters are, really are the lifeblood. Like, Ted mentioned, we do have the, the, the voice narration that's kind of the thread that ties it all together. But if you take a minute to interact with the characters, they will offer you the deep dive into what's going on. So I really, really urge you guys, take a minute, engage some of the characters. Uh, they're a lot of fun. And uh, that's kind of Ted's, what Ted's really, really great at is being able to come up with these really deep backstories and train the actors in a way to really offer a nice deep dive into the stories. Awesome, yeah, and you know, even though it's like the like the main kind of midway area of the event, I've never really considered it like a scare zone um, because if our characters were out scaring, the natural reaction would be everybody would run away from them screaming, and that's what you want in a scare zone. But we don't want that. We want you to engage and interact with these different characters so that way you can learn about them, you can learn more about like the, the deep secrets behind Midnight Falls, and that way you become part of the adventure and part of the story, which is really kind of uh, critical in all this. Now, what town is complete without its mayor? And we have a new mayor in Midnight Falls this season. The one, the only, the late, the great, Monty Revolta, who will be returning. Yes. We love Monty. Let's talk about how much we love Monty. Yeah. I can't say enough amazing things about Monty Revolta. Um, so much that I guess we're making him the mayor. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he... It, we really liked the idea last year of like kind of like this like sleazy salesman that's going up buying these old establishments and uh, to the point where he wasn't even voted in, he's just declared himself the mayor and he's just <laughs> taken over. Um, and so it's kind of a fun a fun theme that we wanted to, to continue to build upon is, is Monty going up and taking over the town. <laughs> got our town square, uh, square characters locked in, we've got Monty locked in, so let's talk about some of our walk-through attractions. First up, uh, the return and the reimagining of the Midnight Mortuary. Yeah, and so um, this represents like that dark house at the end of the street. Uh, it's a family owned and operated business here at Midnight Falls. It's owned by the Marlowe family. And I've always kind of blamed the Marlowe's for all the crazy things going on in Midnight Falls because these folks are into some pretty 
dark things in those back rooms and the, the basement of the mortuary. Uh, let's talk about what's going on for the mortuary 2021. So, you know, when we approached the four attractions at, at the Hayride, since we only have the four attractions, we want to make sure they're all very, very different in feel. Um, the Midnight Mortuary is our traditional, as far as the layout, traditional haunted house. Um, and for this year, we have rebuilt the entire thing. Uh, we kept some of the same themes with the, the Marlowe family, but it's going to be completely different scenes, as well as a pretty expansive outdoor cemetery that the, uh, the punk vampires have taken over and are throwing their big Halloween party out there. I love it. Okay, next up is the return of a fan favorite, Trick or Treat. Yeah. I mean, these are the, the neighborhoods of Midnight Falls, so people can, can see the, the residents and their homes. Let's talk about Trick or Treat. It, you know, Trick or Treat, from when I was visiting the guests at, uh, at the Hayride, was always one of my favorites. It's just a, such a simple yet fun concept. You're trick or treating on Halloween night. And what we wanted to do was kind of take that a step further and create the, this is the neighborhood where all the monsters live that are celebrating Halloween. So you're gonna see monsters that are dressed up as their favorite monsters, essentially. Uh, which gives it a fun little spin. And what we did this year is where we got two new house additions as well as every single house will pack a pretty large scare, which is different. So every single, be careful when you're pressing the buttons. Just a little tip there, make sure you send the person that's annoying you all night, go press the button. Uh, so the doorbells, they, they're, gonna, they're not only gonna trigger your, the monsters to come out and greet you, but it's also gonna trigger, each one will trigger a cool scare. Love it. Okay, next up is the debut, brand new for 2021, the Dead End Diner. All right, so. Uh, this is another local business of Midnight Falls, but I think with this, uh, people are going to be kind of exploring maybe some of the the dark back the alleys. Yeah. yeah, the back alleys behind the businesses of Midnight Falls. So talk about the Dead End Diner. <laughs> so this, uh, this all kind of started as we wanted to create an old, I don't know how to politely say this, but crappy rest stop that we'd pull off to when you're traveling across the country. So it's this old like trucker rest stop with the cornerstone of it being this diner. So as you get into the diner and you see they're obviously eating human meat for dinner, it then takes you on a path of how that food made its way to the table. So you're going backwards through the establishment, um, back into the kitchens, and then you know out to where they're slaughtering their, their dinners. But um, one thing we want to do with this to make it different and fun, and it's in the name Dead End, is there's actual dead ends throughout the maze where the actors can trap you back there. <laughs> I think it's going to be fun. And it's, it's, it's <laughs> that's a good way to sell it. <laughs> but uh, no, it, it, it is fun. That's what I love about, about the LA Haunted Hayride is we're, we're able to have fun with the theme. So you, you will come across a pack of biker werewolves. You're going to come across the, uh, the back alley, you know, the, <laughs> can't say it. Don't say it. The lot lizards. <laughs> <laughs> Hanging out at the truck stop. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a really fun, fun experience. Um, it's got a few surprises in there as well. Yes. All right, so those are our three walkthrough attractions. And of course, we're gonna have the Hayride itself. And I've always kind of uh, looked at the Hayride as like the, the back roads, the hills of Midnight Falls, but it's out there where the spirit of Halloween incarnate has its vice grip on this town of Midnight Falls. But of course, this season is primarily going to consist of all brand new scenes. So let's talk a little bit about it. One of the things um, we wanted to try and do, you know, is, like I said, by learning from 2019 and what we found to be successful and things we could build upon is take certain scenes and either really amp them up or create all new. So I would say I would, at least 80% is brand new on the Hayride this year. Um, and it's going to take you to different places in, throughout, throughout the town, different establishments. Uh, as well as out to the Midnight Lake, which was there in 2019, but like I said, it's reimagined, all new, bigger sets, more scares, more actors. Um, and it takes you on this journey throughout the backwoods. 
And we will also see a couple of other types of businesses out there. So I gotta, you know, one of the questions as a designer always get asked is where does inspiration come from? And I gotta give a huge shout out to my five-year-old on this one. said, Dad, it wouldn't be so cool on the Haunted Hayride if you go into a pizza place and there's an animatronic band that comes to life and attacks you? <laughs> said, yeah, that would be pretty cool. Let's do that. Uh, so yeah, just, a, just as a fun little note, inspiration can literally come from anywhere. Thank you, Mason. That was a good idea. But, uh, okay. Yeah, you know, so that's one of the, one, one of our fun new themes is, is visiting uh, the Midnight Theater and this band of animatronic characters. Um, that come to life. Yes, love it. And so those, those are pretty much the attractions that we're going to be having for this season, but we've been hard at work on some other elements uh, throughout the event, including uh, retail spaces. Let's talk about that. One of the things we want to do is every year is, is continue to build in, onto the town itself and make the entire experience become this immersive uh, environment you're walking through. So, you know, as simple as our retail store is, is facading that and making that part of the experience. So that's, uh, you're gonna notice a lot more of that this year and in the following years, we're always gonna be continuing to build and build and build to make this real life immersive environment. Um, so we have some really cool new sets coming out in the town square, including this and some other. Next slide, Ted. Oh. John's on a mission to eliminate any signage on site that doesn't look appropriate to me. <laughs> so he's, he's getting there. Yes. yes. Um, as well as really looking at the food and beverage program as well. You know, that's, that's one of the things where when we took on this project, we wanted to feel like you're out there on Halloween night. So food and beverage is another thing we really looked at. Like I want to be able to go and get a candy apple and some hot chocolate and hang out in this fall environment. So those are those are the way we're approaching the, the town square and the event as a whole. Very, very cool, very exciting. Maybe a pumpkin spice coffee or two. Perfect, yay, yes. Listen, that is pretty much what we have lined up for today. We were gonna do a Q&A, but we're not gonna be able to do that, but we will all be around the show. So if you have any uh, questions or you wanna chit chat or meet up with us, we're happy to do so. Uh, but more importantly, we want all of you to visit us in Midnight Falls this season. So Chris, you have some information you wanna share? Yeah, we tried to be cryptic about it this time, but judging by the size of the room and all the people that showed up, you probably knew something was coming at the end this year as well, I think. But uh, we want all of you to come out this year, visit Midnight Falls and celebrate with us. So everybody get ready. You're gonna need to get your phone out here. And you're gonna have a very short window to do this so it doesn't spread all over the interwebs, but everybody here is going to get a free general admission ticket to Midnight Falls. Can I get one? So, go ahead. Go for it, Ted. Go for it? Okay, here we go. Hey, Chris, I forgot my phone. Can I get a ticket? I forgot my phone. Can I get a ticket? We'll get you a ticket, John. No, it's payback for when I couldn't get a delusion ticket. Oh. All right, everybody, listen. Are you excited for delusion and LA Haunted Hayride 2021? Are you excited? Come on. All right. Yes. I want to. Yes. I want to give somebody here a shout out real quick. If uh, and I'm going to mispronounce his name, but if Jeff DePauli is here, Jeff um, DePauli. Jeff is working on a really cool uh, podcast for Halloween. He did a podcast called um, That Halloween Podcast. Yeah. And this year he is diving in on 13th floor and is going to be talking to a lot of different people on his podcast, including all of us and, and several other people uh, within the company that you guys don't get a chance to interact with as much. And I think that's going to be really cool. So Awesome. Well, listen, thank you so much, everybody. We're so excited and we can't wait for you to see our events. And as we say in Midnight Falls, Happy Halloween. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Ted.